Working with Bass Nectar, planning for tours is pretty much a non-stop job that never starts or stops. There's so much going on that we're usually always working on the next tour, our next project, our next show, even when we're on a tour or on a show. It's a very communal experience. A lot of people following them around and getting to know each other over the internet and through seeing multiple shows. It creates a sort of family type vibe. So it's a very fun atmosphere, but also can be very, I guess, sort of psychedelic atmosphere to where the whole performance sort of takes you on a journey as opposed to just him playing his songs and DJing his set in full on party mode all the time. There's moments in there where it's very beautiful and ethereal and mellow. So it really is a physical, visual, emotional roller coaster from start to finish and it's quite fun. The thing I love about doing production for Bass Nectar is the fun that we get to have with so many toys. The production we're carrying at the moment, and specifically for this show today, is you know it's just like good cutting edge technology, amazing product. We get to play with it and have a whole lot of fun. This show is in five semi trucks. People wise, I guess uh, it's probably about 50 people involved in what's going on on the stage, including the local labour. And then of course there's all the auxiliary folks, you know, the people doing the catering and setting up the dressing rooms and security folk, etc. So yeah, it's a big project, a lot of manpower, a lot of manpower. The most exciting thing about being on tour with Bass Necker is probably putting up the most amount of PA that anyone's ever seen in the venues we're going into and hearing and feeling it during the show. We get to build the show to our specifications. Lauren's a great guy to work with. He has a very firm vision of what he wants to do and how he wants to present. With that in mind, it's like we bring everything to the stage, you know, because Lauren has a vision and, and the only way to do that is to build it yourself. Lauren puts together the material. When he's happy with the balance and the sound and the instrumentation, the composition, etc., yeah, it'll then go off to his mastering engineer. And a lot of care goes into the mastering, you know, right down to the frequency of the root note. So one thing that's happened in recent times, especially now that we've got the Leo with the LFC 1100s, is we're finding we can go lower as far as the bass drops and the root notes go, and we can get right down to like 26, 27 hertz cleanly and, and physically as part of the composition. Basically, I'll be making adjustments over the course of the show or from track to track based on what I'm hearing in the room, what the temperature is, how windy it is, whatever, you know, there's all sorts of things. So basically, I, I then get to polish it and then the kids go off. I actually went and checked out a bunch of different PAs earlier this year and I uh, came across the Maya Leo and it, it, quite frankly, it just blew my mind. I was like, you gotta be kidding me, you know, this is awesome. And, you know, I've said it before, it's a game changer as far as I'm concerned. And it allows me to do stuff with bass nectar that I've wanted to do and it's, it's like the technology wasn't there or that piece of equipment wasn't there, well, I, I, it is now. I'm really happy with the Leo rig. The ER Tour sound is providing all the audio. Avid SC48, uh, mixing console, Avalon 737, tube, mic, pre, and compressors. We're using several Waves plugins on the Avid SC48. We're using a cardioid pattern on the subarrays. There's 1100 LFCs per column, and we have three backwards or reversed elements uh, within that array that the polarity is flipped from positive to negative, and then we time align that element back to the face of the array. And what that does is it creates a cancellation behind behind the array. And it basically allows you to stand backstage and kind of carry on a conversation. You don't have to yell, unlike front house, where it's a little louder. One thing about bass nectar when it comes to audio is it's an incredibly enveloping, visceral experience. It's physical. And to be able to do that and to do it with control is quite difficult. And I've found in the past with PAs, I'm listening to the PA and then I'm changing it to make it the way I want it to sound. With the Leo, I'm finding that it's kind of transparent. So it's like what I put into it is what comes out of it. And I think ultimately what ends up happening for the audience is they get that visceral physical experience without getting hurt because that's very easy to do at high volumes. You can hurt people, you know, and it has to be done responsibly and having something like the Leo rig makes it so much easier because it's so clean and I can get it up to the levels I need to without overdriving components or killing people.
when you're looking to cover a venue like Red Rocks from front to back and the extreme angle up and trying to get consistent results in every seat so that everybody that's participating is experiencing a very similar vibe as the same person in the front row. I think the best comments to hear after or during a Bass Nectar show are just how happy and satisfied and how different and unique people's experience are at the Bass Nectar show and to know that a lot of people recognize the difference from what we're doing to a lot of what else is out there.